Hi folks, I'm Josh Papaloski, WVU Extension Agent for Greenbrier County. And that's where we are here today, here on the farm. And in particular farm is Perk Farm Organic Dairy here in uh, Frankfort, West Virginia. So uh, today we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, little bit of time in the uh, kitchen, but we're also gonna spend a little bit of time in the in the barn and learn a little bit about dairy. Uh, every year, Americans consume about 25 gallons each of dairy and dairy products. And so we're gonna go and see a little bit about where that comes from in particular, and especially here in West Virginia. So let's go see uh, if we can find the farmer here at, uh, at Perk Farm and find a little bit out about what they do here every day. Anybody in? Yes. Hey, Tom, I'm here. Well, how are you? Good, how are you? You guys been busy this morning? Very busy indeed. Well, hey, we wanted to bring some kids out on the farm today that maybe they can learn a little bit about milk and where it comes from. Perfect, perfect place to be. Let's go. All right, Lauren, you got us down here in the milking parlor now. Um, but before we go into the details, why don't you tell us a little bit about where we're at at Perk Farm Organic Dairy. Yeah, so my name is Lauren Perkins. I'm fourth generation on this farm. I uh, farm with my dad, Rem. So we are primarily a dairy farm. We milk around 300 Jersey cows. We also have a herd of 100 cows of beef cows, and we also are crop farmers. So with that, in the parlor right now, we're milking what's called a 24 swing parlor. So we can milk 24 cows at a time. It takes us about an hour to milk 150 cows. So we spend about four hours a day in this parlor and the rest of the time we're out with the cows on the pasture. Wow, that's fantastic. So how much will one of these cows produce? So an average Jersey cow is going to produce about 30 to 40 pounds of milk per day for us. So you guys are organic and that means your cows are out on grass most of the time, right? Yep, so our cows are in the milking parlor to be milked and after that they're out on grass. So our cows spend um, during the day mostly on grass as well as into the, into the night as well. But um, we make sure they're fed and happy between the grass and the mixed feeds we feed them and that's what helps us produce all this lovely milk. So that would be one thing that on a conventional uh, confinement type dairy, uh, those cows do produce a whole lot more. That's where uh, we produce that 22 billion pounds a year. A good chunk of that is coming from conventional where those cows do produce a lot more. But these girls here, they get to uh, luxury out on the grass and they just don't have to produce as much. So Josh is right. Our cows don't produce as much milk, but what's in their milk is what's really important to us. The proteins and the fats are what help make uh, string cheese, mozzarella, as well as butter, which I think we're going to make today at the house, Josh. Ah, that's going to be pretty cool, I think. Yeah. So when we milk a cow, it looks like we've got containers up here. Do we, I guess, do we keep track of measuring ca how much these cows produce and where does it go to after that? So each cow has a identification tag that they wear and as they enter the back of the parlor to be milked, it recognizes who she is. It records how much milk she gives so that we know uh, on average about how much milk our cows give. So after the cows finish being milked, the milk transfers itself into the tank room where the milk is filtered and cooled down before the milk truck comes to pick it up every day. Let's go take a look at that. Sounds good. All right, Lauren, you brought me into the milk room. So what is all this stuff? Yeah, so this is one of the most important parts of the, of the milk room. So we were just in the parlor and saw where the cows are being milked and where the milk goes there. So then it comes into this room through the pipes above, comes into the filter system. So this filters out anything that would have gone into the milk while we were milking them and just to make sure the milk is extra clean. So once we get the milk clean, it goes back up and around the pipes and goes over to this device. So this is a two-stage plate cooler. This is what cools the milk down. So when a, a cow gives milk, it comes out of her at about 100 degrees. So with this two-stage plate cooler, we're able to cool the milk down to about 60 degrees before it goes into the milk tank. So behind us, Josh, is a 6,500-gallon milk tank that we use to store all the milk. So this milk tank right now is holding milk that we milked the cows from this morning. And right now, it's at about 37 degrees. So it's taking the milk from the cow at about 100 degrees. And in the tank now, it's 37 degrees. 
That's awesome. And so how often do, do you sell milk? Or I guess the milk truck comes and picks up? So our milk truck comes every day to pick up milk from us and he takes it to Virginia to have it processed. And there it either becomes uh, milk in a gallon jug, uh, butter, or cheese. You're gonna teach us a little bit about making butter and cheese, right? Absolutely, you can do this at home, um, just with products you can buy at the store. All right, so let's go and uh, let's we'll spend a little bit of time in the kitchen and uh, let's, let's do some experiments. Sounds good. So folks, we've made our way into the kitchen now to do a little bit of experimenting and we're gonna do some things that you at home can do as well. So obviously most of us go to the store, uh, purchase our uh, butters, uh, maybe our cheeses, and obviously we all go to the store to pick up our fresh uh, gallon of milk there. But today we're gonna take those and we're gonna break those uh, that apart into what we have as our milk components. So uh, milk itself, uh, is about 87% uh, water, and the other remaining factor is where our solids come from. So our two main categories of solids is our fats and our proteins. So obviously with our fats, we end up with, with our butter. So there's our, our one pound of butter that uh, we here in America produce about 3.23 billion pounds of butter a year from our, our dairy producers do. And then obviously our, our protein portion, uh, we can break out into casein and whey, and that is where we're gonna get our cheeses from. So today we're actually gonna show you how at home you can make your own butter and your own cheeses uh, there from those milk products that you buy there at the store. So uh, let's kind of branch in and we'll get started on the first one. So with this, we're gonna make butter. So butter is a really simple thing to make at home. You only need one ingredient, maybe two if you like your butter salted as opposed to unsalted. So for this, you need to use heavy whipping cream. Um, this is a pint jar or pint container of the heavy whipping cream. You can use as much as you want. Um, the more you put into your mixer, the longer it takes to do. So with this, make sure and shake it really good. So we're using heavy whipping cream because you, this is what has the fats in it. So when we actually make the butter, we're getting two components. We're getting the actual butter itself, but also buttermilk. So if you've ever heard of buttermilk, pan buttermilk pancakes, this is where you get it from. So with this, you're pouring in your heavy whipping cream. So this process of making the butter takes, um, with what we're doing, it's about five minutes. So, and within that five minutes, you will really be able to see um, the milk separate or the cream separate and to see what's going on. So we're gonna turn the mixer on now, do it at a low setting to start out with to kind of um, get acclimated. I would suggest having something to cover your mixer with just to keep the splash, or what, the splash down. And then um, I do use the, um, the whip section of the KitchenAid mixer to do it that really um, is good at separating the, the cream. So as you can see here, we're mixing. This process takes about five minutes and um, we'll come back when we've got some butter ready for you. So it's been a few minutes, and as you can tell, um, we went through pouring the heavy whipping cream in. It started to turn into whipping cream, like you would put on um, a dessert, and now we are in the butter stage. So with the butter stage, we're getting the two components. We're getting the actual butter itself, as well as the buttermilk. So we're gonna let go for a few more minutes, and then when we get done, we will show what we've got. And here we have it. So when I tilt it up, this is the butter. So you really can't feel it, but it's pretty firm to the touch. And what's in the bowl is the remnants of the buttermilk that you can also save and use in your food. So now the process is we're gonna remove the butter, put it in a cheesecloth, and the cheesecloth is meant to squeeze out the rest of the moisture that's inside the butter right now. So you do want to do this um, in a somewhat ice bath 
So having the butter be cold makes it a lot easier to mold and shape. And then once we get that, we will separate um, the rest of the butter into its shape we, can, we form and put the buttermilk in a jar to put back into the fridge. So we've made our butter and now we're gonna go to the next component of that milk and that is our protein. So for that protein, like we said, we have casein and whey. So we're gonna show you how, Lauren's gonna show you how to separate that out and we can make our own homemade mozzarella. So uh, we're gonna put that recipe up there for you all at home that may want to uh, make that yourself. So we're not gonna repeat the amount of ingredients that we're putting in here today. But we're gonna start off with... With the milk, most important thing. So when you're doing the milk, um, we have a Dutch oven that I put the milk into that I had in the refrigerator. So this milk, it's best to use whole milk for this because you want all of the fats and proteins that are in that in making the cheese. So you put your milk in a Dutch oven, you are covering it, and you're gonna heat this to 126 degrees. So by heating it, you are um, warming up the milk particles so they're able to separate. So when we get to 126 degrees, using your thermometer, we will come back and update you on where we go next from there. So our boiling point reached 126 degrees with the milk in the pot. So we have added our cup of vinegar to it. So now we are going to stir. And once you look, we're already making some cheese. So using the vinegar is what separates the proteins in the milk. And by doing this, it allows us to pick out the things that make up the cheese. So basically, what we're gonna do now is we've taken the milk off of, off of the heat. So we are going to um, separate the cheese from the other products that are in here, and we're gonna stretch the curd. We're gonna add some salt and baking soda um, to get the elasticity that makes mozzarella um, the best string cheese ever. So we're back. We have put the cheese into a separate bowl and now we've added the baking soda and salt. So we've also let this set for about an hour. So now we're coming back to it. So in this process, we're basically gonna take the cheese and we're going to mix in the salt and baking soda. So this process shouldn't take very long, but in doing this, we are just making the cheese have the salty taste to it. So in this process, it may look a little bit um, mushy right now, but this is part of the process. So by mixing in the salt and baking soda, we are changing the texture of the cheese. So after we do this, we're gonna let it set for another hour. And after that hour, we're gonna add in some butter and then we'll be able to stretch the curd to make it to where it is a more solidified product. So we finished with our butter and our cheese and we're just gonna show you what we came up with. So this is the mozzarella cheese we created. So it hasn't quite solidified yet. So time um, is your friend on this. So this is one that we have finished. Um, this mozzarella that we're making is a very soft cheese. So this will not be anything hard, um, but as you can see, still very soft to eat. And if you harden it up, it becomes, um, it can become pretty stringy as well, but um, still perfect to eat with salt if you'd like it as well. So with the butter, we've also um, finished. So I didn't mold the butter, but we strained it out in the cheesecloth. And as you can tell, um, we did add salt to this as well. So all you would need now is a butter knife to scoop up some butter and you're ready to go. So that is how you take milk from the milk tank and the cows and make your very own products at home. Enjoy.